grace and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is K.O. Ninu. I welcome you to Pittsburgh Presbyterian Church. We have gathered today to celebrate the life and ministry of Martha Ella Murphy. We also want to receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit. We've also gathered to proclaim out loud the good news of eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. A few guidelines as we worship together today. We're going to sit throughout the service except for when it's time for the blessing. And I'll come up front and raise my hands and indicate for you to stand. We are also going to, after the Lord's Prayer, listen to the playing of the Lord's Prayer by Phyllis Curtis, Martha Murphy's sister. Otherwise, everything else is clear before you in the bulletin. We begin with some sentences of Scripture. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord says, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear God, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and are now rested from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially, we thank you for Martha Murphy, whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. Bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
too many things to balance this morning with glasses because I'm getting where I can't see. So forgive me. Hello, I'm Chucky Hessong, and I love my mama Martha. I'm really not one of her biological children. I'm simply one of the many girls who are blessed to follow her. I recognize quickly after starting work with K-State that I would need to watch this special woman and model my work after her. However, I soon knew she was the real deal and I needed to model my life after her as well. Memories of Martha flood my heart and mind as I remember our friendship. Yes, we were KSRE colleagues, as many of you were, but I was blessed with so much more. So today, I say thank you. Thank you, Mama Martha, for teaching me how to travel. We traveled to Manhattan at least a million times, New Orleans, Savannah, and Fort Collins. When we traveled, we would talk until our voices were hoarse and our eyes were so heavy we couldn't stay awake any longer. Then we would go to bed and do it all over again. We could travel together for an entire week and still talk the whole way home from the airport. With Martha, traveling felt more like a slumber party with your best friend than a required work conference. Thank you, Mama Martha, for laughing until we peed on the sidewalks of Savannah, walking home in sloshy, sloshy wet shoes, and laughing some more while we did subsequent laundry. Thank you, Mama Martha, for teaching me how to read a map. I loved hearing of her childhood family road trips where she enjoyed her taking her turn riding shotgun, which meant she got to be the navigator for her dad. I never got to meet Martha's dad, but let me tell you, I know he would be proud. That woman could read a map and identify north in any location. However, I have a confession to make. I didn't really learn to read a map. <laughs> I just followed Martha. Martha was worthy of following. Thank you, Mama Martha, for helping me embrace being a disruptor. <laughs> you see, the entire state staff had to take a leadership personality test to identify your strengths and weaknesses. When I received my result of disruptor, I felt embarrassed. I considered it a weakness until I realized that Mama Martha was also a disruptor. I could see the work Martha had done through her disruptive leadership style. Who wouldn't want to be like her? She was the kind of leader who would thoughtfully listen, think, and then ask, but what if, and let us think. Martha was a big picture thinker who had an admirable ability to put all the pieces together in an organized, sensible fashion. Usually, Martha used her strengths for the greater good, but sometimes she was known to contribute to a good prank. She may have appeared to be the innocent one, but trust me when I tell you that she was the brains behind the scenes thinking through whose phone to use so the number was unidentifiable, how to record the conversation so we could laugh later, what details to include to make it believable, and identify who was to be the next victim of our shenanigans. In a decade or two, it is possible that no one will remember specifically that Martha Murphy did the work she did, but our communities are a significantly better place because of her. I see Blake saying absolutely yes. So thank you, Mama Martha, for teaching me to be a girlfriend. You see, she put my divorce court hearing on her calendar and came to the courtroom with me without me asking her to. I didn't even know I needed someone to be there. But let me tell you the sense of relief when I looked up and saw her beautiful, soft eyes on her loving, accepting, reassuring face sitting behind my attorney that day. It will never be forgotten. She and Steve were married for, 40, for over 40 years. She didn't understand what I was going through, really, but it didn't even matter. She knew I needed a friend on my team that day. Even when I didn't have the sense to know, she knew. And she just showed up because that's what girlfriends do. Martha was my friend, the kind of friend that wrapped a gift for me on Christmas, knowing that single moms of young children don't get presents under the Christmas tree. In her beautiful cursive handwriting, it said, quote, don't open till Christmas morning. And I didn't. And I cried when I opened the cookbook I had mentioned in passing. Because Martha saw me, even when it seemed no one else did. Martha listened, she talked, and she laughed. She believed me when the ghost woman and ghost cat visited my room in Savannah. Jeanette will attest to me for this. <laughs> she even helped me denounce the spirits in the name of the Lord to rid my room of spirits. She found cooking classes for us to take when we traveled because she knew I would love it.
Martha loved to read. Historical novels were her favorites. She also knew what kind of books I would enjoy, even more than I did. I may never find a good book to read again. <laughs> when we lunched together last Friday, she brought me three books. She wanted me to return one book to her when I finished it so she could pass it along for another to enjoy. Oh, I wish how I could return it to your hands. It seems impossible to think that you just handed it to me. Martha would often comment that she didn't know why I wanted to hang out with her because she was, quote, old. Ask many people, ask the many people whom she mentored along the way why we wanted to hang out with her because I was not the only one. And you will find the answers to be simple because Martha Murphy made a profound difference in our lives. She was a builder of people and a teacher. She set an example of love and acceptance of others. She was joyful and a true friend. To Mrs. October, I will miss you. Thank you, dear Lord, for the gift of Martha's friendship and love. I'm Nancy McKenzie, and Martha Bailey Murphy was my friend. But she wasn't just my friend, she was everybody's friend. Martha and I met when we were nine years old, when I moved to town. Her parents invited my parents and us kids all out to their house. They lived in a house on top of a hill, out in the country, just a little ways from Eureka. Martha took me right to her bedroom. I don't remember what we played, but I remember that that was the start, and we have been friends ever since. That's 60 years. Some of our classmates are here today, and they were friends with her before I was. But we all loved Martha, and Martha loved all of us. We graduated in the class of 70, and we've been trying to have a class reunion for a couple of years. A tornado in Eureka got in our way and COVID got in our way, but we still have a 50 year class reunion scheduled. Our class we thought was special because we've all stayed very, very close. We had smaller groups, but when we all got together, it was one big group. There was a group that was Marsha, Marsha, Martha, and Nancy. And we went to where everybody else was, but usually there were a few more hanging out with us, going here and there. I wish I could tell you all the stories because you all know Martha and you would get a kick out of it. Martha laughed, loved to laugh, I can hear her laughing now. Um, Martha was the best kind of friend. She was fun, no matter what we did, most things. She got me into some things that I didn't think were fun at the time, but they were good stories. We have stayed friends side by side through everything. When Martha met Steve, you know, it wasn't long before they were married. She loved Steve from day one. I got a phone call the day after, I believe it was the Christmas dance at the hospital. And from then on, she was gone. Um, so many of our classmates since we put the news out about Martha, have contacted me and put messages out, sending their love and prayers to all the family and all of Martha's friends everywhere. Martha loved life. She lived life to the fullest every day. Martha was honest to a fault. She was smart. And sometimes people didn't realize how smart she was, but let me tell you, she was smart. She was humble, and that's why we didn't know 
all of the things that she did for so many people for so many years. Martha was a hard worker. When we had slumber parties, Martha usually had to go home early because she had to go to work at the Western Auto on Saturday morning. Or on Sunday, she had to go to church. And her parents thought it was best if she didn't stay up all night with us. Um, Martha not only worked at the Western Auto in the family business, but she also was a soda jerk at the local Rexall drugstore. She had a unique boss, and he always called her Miss America. And that's what Martha was to us. She was a Miss America. She had it all. She was so talented. So many things she could do. She could cook. She could sew. I mean, and not just sew. It was beautiful. When we were in high school and Martha was in home ec, she made the best thing. She was in 4-H. She always won all the prizes. But nobody knew it. We weren't in 4-H, any of the rest of us in that little group. We didn't know how fabulous all of that was. Martha loved her flowers. I swear, any time I called her, she was out in the garden if it was decent weather. I didn't get that either. <laughs> um, she loved her house. The house that Steve took her home to when they got married. They got married in August, the hottest day of the year, with, in a church with no air conditioning. We were melting. Then Martha wanted to have the reception out at the house, down by the creek. Do you know how humid it was? <laughs> the cake was sliding off. It was a mess. But she got her way there. Steve and Clayton, her dad, had to clear out an area where we could set up tables. It was quite a job, but didn't bother Martha a bit. The house that Martha built, her home that she loved, which she designed, practically tore down herself and built back up. She recently remodeled her bathroom upstairs. It is so cute. You just, I, I can't believe it. She just was so multi-talented. She could do any craft and you all can see her barn quilts if you go out to the house. Up at the highest peak of the barn, I'm sure Jeff and Christopher weren't as excited about that as Martha was. But there was only one place that those were going to go. And she was patient and waited, and up they are now. And they're, they're just, they're perfect. Um, she loved decorating her house at Christmas. Got a lot of help from you kids, didn't she? Yep. And she sent us all pictures of the work she was making you guys do. So nobody got by with anything. You, you had to toe the mark. Um, she created traditions for her children and for her grandchildren. And she loved it. And they loved her. Um, Martha did love traveling, as Chucky said. We traveled starting in college. And let me tell you, Martha could be cheap. <laughs> Some of the places we ended up staying were not acceptable. <laughs> but we all survived. Uh, we went skiing when we were not really the most athletic people. Didn't work out too well for us but we had a lot of laughs. Martha stopped the lift. When we were just learning, we had this instructor. They said, whatever you do, don't sit down, just hold on to the pole. First thing, Martha went first, of course, sat right down, stopped the whole thing. We were all in hysterics. It didn't get any better either. Um, she took me camping. I don't camp, one night. It was miserable. 
and I've never camped again. But do you all know that Martha, when we, gr we graduated from college in 74, she had a teaching degree. She went to Australia to teach. There was a shortage of teachers. So she taught, you know, I don't think she was really that crazy about it, but it was an adventure. When that adventure was over, instead of just coming back home, she went camping through the Middle East for three months. On a bus, she got on a bus, not a nice bus, with a bunch of strangers. They weren't strangers for long. And they camped through the Middle East. Armed people everywhere to protect them. And they couldn't get across the border in one of the countries. They had to pay ransom to get through. Oh my gosh, I told her she was crazy. But it was an adventure. This was probably 1976. Um, as I said, I was lucky and unlucky to share many of her adventures. The most recent, we spent a couple through COVID. Martha wasn't a fan of COVID, being separated from her friends and her family. So we, we snuck off for a couple of little overnights and she took me to a place that was so isolated, COVID would never find us. And we had quite an adventure there because the electrical system was not good. You turned one light on, lights went out in another room. The smoke alarm went off in the middle of the night. Like to gave me a heart attack. Um, Martha knew what she wanted. Steve said that last night when we were talking, talking about the house. And Martha knew how to get what she wanted, but not in a selfish way. She knew what was right. And even though you might not know it, she would work behind the scenes out in front of everybody, wherever she was needed, to get a wrong righted or to see that her idea was put into motion. This church, a big project, a remodel project, Martha was right there and worked hard and loved every minute of it. Um, we laugh. I can hear her laughter, and I hope I always hear it. Another different small group of us classmates traveled some. We couldn't travel, so Martha set up Zoom meetings for us. We called them meetings. We might have a glass of wine. Martha loved wine, too. And we talked usually about three hours. And then the Zoom quit, and on the third round, we would stop, whether we wanted to or not. Martha set up the Zoom. None of the rest of us know how. So we're going to have to do something that um, different, or somebody's going to help us, have to help us. Martha loved to shop. I didn't, so we compromised. I would walk around with her for a while, then I'd sit down and read my book. Martha gave me books all the time, too, Chucky. And when we traveled, she would give us homework. We would have historical novels to read about the area we were going to. I was always usually reading the books after we got back. We will miss Martha. But Martha was a woman of faith. We know where Martha is. Her smile, her laughter, her kindness, everything about her, our friend, my friend. I am so thankful for Martha Bailey Murphy in my life.
Good morning. I'm Jerry French. I'm Martha's brother-in-law. I want to share a few of my memories of Martha. You may have heard a couple of these already. They're similar, but so be it. My first memories of Martha date back to the mid-1960s when I was dating Jeanette and frequented their home on the Bailey Hill. As you can imagine, Martha was this cute, vivacious young lady who was always trying to upstage her sister. A later memory revolves around her post-college decision to move to Australia and help that country with their shortage of teachers. As we all came to realize, this early decision was completely in line with her sense of adventure and a desire to explore new paths. And what an exciting path that turned out to be. She lived in a small rural community, revisited a 1950s lifestyle, learned to appreciate warm beer, and no doubt charmed many a male Aussie. At the conclusion of her term, rather than simply take a flight back home, she chose to board the bus full of similarly adventurous young folks and headed west across Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. Although she visited and experienced many marvelous sights on the trek, it was no luxury tour. Whenever nature would call, the bus driver would just pull to the side of the road and announce, gents to the left, gals to the right, and that was instructive for everybody to get out, line up, and squat. From England, she flew directly to Jeanette's in my home to meet her, both of her new nephews. To the benefit of both Jeff and Molly, she received some valuable training in baby care during this initial visit. Babies will roll off changing tables to the floor if the changer is misdirected. After circumferring the globe, she soon found her way to Girard, where a challenging career, an accepting community, and a handsome young fa farmer discovered her. Her career success was quite evident in the responsibility afforded her and the promotion promotional offers she would receive if she was willing to move or commit more time to the effort. Of course, her dedication to the family trumped such offers. The community was a beneficiary of this decision to remain close to Southeast Kansas. Her contribution to the community, youth, and the church was a focus for her entire life that always gave her great satisfaction and joy. We cannot talk about Martha without discussing family. Many of you fully understand that a career woman with a community focus while living on a farm, raising and managing a family can only be done by some kind of superwoman. The best any parent can hope for is to have your kids grow up to be good human beings. That desire was accomplished in spades with both children becoming professionals with their own beautiful families. A huge success for Martha. A successful family farming operation is dependent on the partnership of both the person atop the tractor as well as the one back at the house. The Murphy Farm is another example of Martha's success. In Martha's case, I have to mention another huge attribute 
in relation to her extended family. Regardless of the event, family gatherings were centered around Steve and Martha's home. Whether providing a bed or a feast for the multitudes, Martha was the organizer, the provider, and the welcome greeter. Martha Bailey Murphy is a lady I have known for most of my life, who I have greatly admired for her business acumen, her unending energy, her sunny, positive attitude, and her devotion to duty. Jeanette will miss the long conversations about our respective families, flowers, and particular flavors of red wine. May you all reminisce this evening with the, a glass of the grape or even a warm brew. Thank you.
For those of you who are joining us somewhere online, I want you to know that I see you. I want you to know that we are glad you are joining us and able to participate in this special occasion of worship. Let us pray together. Eternal God, your love for us is everlasting. You alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of the morning light. Help us to turn to you with believing hearts in the stillness of this hour. Speak to us of eternal things so that hearing the promises in Scripture, we may have hope and be lifted above our distress into the peace of your presence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I see you. I see you. I see you. That's the single idea I would want for you to take with you from my little part of the service today. I see you. How many of us were completely shocked to pieces when we heard of the death of Martha? I mean, how many of us have that moment stamped into our very consciousness? All of us. No doubt. It's not supposed to be this way. Goodness, did I not just see Martha on Facebook among her flowers just the other day? Were there not posts with Martha and her grandchildren just the other day? Martha was retired a couple of years ago. It's not supposed to be this way. And yet it is. In as much as, friends, we have gathered here to be with Steve and the rest of the family, can we also acknowledge that somewhere in here is a very deep loss, a loss that is quite personal? And that loss is lifted up and put on a screen before all of us. It's a massive loss. And behind this loss are dead dreams. Not only this dream, but perhaps your dreams as well. That loss that comes to mind right now. Oh, this one is right in front of us, but there are others. There are others. Losses we've lived through, losses we have suffered through. And you wonder, does anybody know? Does anybody see what I'm going through? Is anybody aware? Does anybody see me? Now, 
uh, it's probably happened already. When something happens and you say to yourself, oh yeah, let's call Martha. And hasn't it happened already? Her name was Hagar. Hagar was an Egyptian slave who was a servant of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Now, God had promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a son who would then become the seed of a promise, not only for them, but for the whole world. But they waited and waited and waited and waited, and for crying out loud, Abraham now is 86 years old. Sarah had a bright idea. Went to Abraham one day and said, you know, this is not working. Maybe God could use a little help. Hagar, my Egyptian slave here, could step in for me, could become your mistress. Abraham scratched his head, and it wasn't long before Hagar was pregnant. The story takes an interesting turn at that point because Hagar, now Mistress Hagar, begins to act a little disrespectful towards Sarah. And Sarah is not about to take it. She becomes very harsh with Hagar, and so harsh that Hagar runs away. And she finds herself in the desert. And in the desert, God appears to Hagar. <laughs> and God makes a promise to Hagar, saying, Hagar, you go back. I have a promise for you. I have plans for you. But before Hagar leaves that dry, lonely place, she says, you know what? I have something that I need to do before I leave this place. She says, I am going to name this place. And what will Hagar call this place where she saw God? From Genesis chapter 16, verse 13. One word, one verse for you today. So Hagar named the Lord who spoke to her, You are Elroy. For she said, have I really seen God and remained alive after seeing him? You are Elroy, the God who sees me. <laughs> the God who sees me. Out there in the desert, where she was sure nobody knew where she was, she was as lost as could be. It was a mess. Human relationships are difficult, are they not? I see you. I see you, God says. I see you. When you are in that difficult place, when you are crying your tears, when you find yourself holding that phone, you thought you were going to call Martha, and it just hits you, couldn't quite. I see you, God says. I see you. And when God says, I see you, he also means I have purposes that I am working out for you regardless. I see you. Fast forward, fast forward, 
fast forward. When Joseph was lying in the dry well, screaming for his life, and his brothers decided to sell him off to merchants who were going to Egypt, they bought Joseph and took him to Egypt. The rest of the story, it was Joseph who, after years of suffering, interpreted the Pharaoh's dream and saved the life of many. The story continues into the New Testament. God is a faithful God. I see you, God. I see you. Can you trust that? Can you trust that? Will the tears come? Of course they will. Will it be difficult? Yes, maybe. Difficult times, difficult situations, yeah. But Hagar in the dry desert, nobody around. And she names the place, the God who sees me. I see you. I see you. When the Apostle Paul begins to talk about the resurrection of Jesus, the term he uses when he talks to the Corinthian church is the term that describes an engagement ring. When Paul talks about the resurrection, he uses a term that describes an engagement ring. I wonder why. Could it be that an engagement ring is all about a promise? It's all about what is yet to come. I see you. And what God did for Jesus of Nazareth on Easter morning is that engagement ring. A promise for all of us. For all of creation. God is making all things new. In the meantime, three words. I see you. Can you trust that? Martha did. Martha saw people. Gosh, I wish I had coordinated with our first speaker. And seeing people translated into certain actions. I see you. I see you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. God who sees us, we are grateful for your goodness to us. We find ourselves in different places, but today, here in this place, our great sadness We are grateful for Martha, for her life, for her ministry, for her work, for her love, for all the different ways in which she was present. She was open and engaged. That we hear you say you see us even in the midst of this deep, deep sadness ring in our ears. Keep ringing in our ears, God. We're going to need you through this one. We're going to need you. And now as children of God, we join our voices together as we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Let us reflect along as Phyllis plays the Lord's Prayer for us. Think through those phrases and pray along.
into your hands, O merciful Savior. We command your servant, Martha, Murphy. Acknowledge we humbly pray a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Please rise for the benediction. Go in the comfort and confidence of the God who sees you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. God's people said. Amen. Please be seated.
Okay, great job. Yeah, all well, well done. Thank you. Thanks for doing it. Hey, Virginia. Would you like your coat? I'll go get it. Do you want me to get your coat? That would be so kind. Thank you.